this PyWare tutorial today, we'll be talking about a quick and easy setup guide. Three years ago, I made one of these videos and it has over 6,000 views, but a lot has changed in PyWare since then. So here is my 2024 easy setup guide update. Now, before you begin, you're going to want to have uh, some information so that you can set your file up correctly. I usually don't set up a client's file unless I have this information. So I'm going to go to my handy dandy drill design production planner. I have these available on my website and I've already met with the client and I have written down and they've provided me all the info I need and I wrote it down in my first movement here. I've got my counts, I've got my uh, music score, my mp3, uh, which I've converted to an AUG file already. If you don't know how to do that, I have a, a video on my YouTube of how to do that. And then I have the prop and staging information. This should give me all the information I need to work in Pyware. So let's open it up. Now I'm running Pyware 11.3. If you are not necessarily on this update yet, I think a lot of this will still apply to your program. Um, I think most of my settings here are our default other than I use the dark look, the black um, look for mine. I tend to maximize my window as soon as I open it up. And then from here, uh, we'll begin my usual process of setting up my file. So the first thing I do is I make sure that I have the correct grid by going to utilities, grid designer. Uh, we could use the kind of the typical setup here where the numbers have been put 11 steps from the front and back and this back uh, marker has been flipped with flip orientation. And that's a nice useful tool to try to make the drill um, field look exactly like the students will see it. You can always drag these and pull them up and down uh, to make sure that they're in the right spot for your field if they're, for some reason yours are different. And if you're writing for a college or a band in Texas or um, I've even had some bands that their circuit just uses the NCAA hashes. I usually go down here to load and I go to NCAA uh, 10 yard end zone. And it looks pretty much ex pretty much the same. Just has um, the hashes moved in to match that. When it looks good and you're happy with how it looks, hit OK. And now we have this. So here would be an NCAA grid. I usually go from here and I'll save. So right now I'll save as sample tutorial save. It's good to get your file saved early so that you can just control S as you do all of these steps. So my grid is set. The next thing I do is I go to file document options and I'll add some copyright and author information. So I'll just write Drill design by me. And that way that kind of appears on the page um, for, for the drill pages. If you'd like and you want to put an image, you can put an image on the pages as well by clicking here, um, finding wherever your image is. So mine is in a folder. Um, and you can find your logo and add it here. So I just navigated to that. This is a PNG. And then this would appear in the upper left corner of every drill chart. Um, I don't usually do this, but sometimes I do. Um, if you need to make restrictions, like you want to provide the Pyware file for people, you can do that. If, the, if you don't want them to be able to edit it uh, or that you don't want them to be able to print it or have a watermark over it, you can do all these things here. I usually leave those unclicked. I'll change my uh, drill title because I don't like how it puts .3dj at the end of it. Sample drill setup guide. Okay, and that way at the very top, it'll say that instead of the Pyware file. I'll usually go to real view perspective and I like to add a surface because I don't really like how this looks. Um, for whatever reason, it's not my favorite look here. So I'll go to surface. I'm going to use my blank high school field surface, which is uh, included in my Pyware tutorial. And that should be good. If you'd like to add a stadium, there's loads here in the newer versions. Maybe we'll go Lucas Oil Stadium. And now you have a fancy stadium and field uh, to present your 
drill on, which is nice. The next thing I like to do is I make sure I add um, I add my pit and props. So you do need some prior information, of course, from your client on this. Uh, you need to know where the front ensemble will go. So in this case, we'll just kind of do a traditional front ensemble. I pick the point tool. I'll put it about four steps from the front sideline. Accept, select that person. Click my little visuals flag here for the visuals editing tool. Go to the performer prop tab, pit prop. We'll do medium pit in the drop down and hit apply changes. So this just kind of puts a standard uh, looking uh, pit down at the bottom. Not too big, not too small. And another thing I like to do is I'll go over here and I will pick 1 16th of a um, resolution, grab my point tool again, I'll open up my real view editor and I like to put some folks in the pit. That way you can just see how the scale and the size of the pit and the players is. So I'm just clicking and then kind of dragging them near the equipment. And that way it just gives an idea to the director and the people watching of how it will look. And it's, a, it's nice to do this because, except because then you've got folks in the pit, you can kind of see if you, you know, get too close to the front, uh, what that will look like and that sort of thing. Then what I like to do is select them and go display and lock them in. So now they're locked. I can't select them anymore. And I've got a nice looking uh, setup here. Now you can go next level. Sometimes I go next level and add the drum major podium. I have clients that like that. I'll do my one step resolution. Click the point tab. I'll make a, another performer right in front of the, the front ensemble. Maybe bring them down about six steps from the front ensemble. And I'll turn this into a structure prop, I believe. It is a podium, six feet, apply. So now we've got a nice podium in front of the front ensemble. And we're gonna go ahead and make that uh, select it again and then make that can be walked on in the visuals editor. That way we can put a performer on it. Let's make that performer. Again, made another performer right next to the prop. We'll face that performer backfield, facing backfield. And then I like to do visuals, bent wall pose. That kind of looks like a uh, conductor with the arms up to the sides. Then I make sure in the performer prop tab here that that person can walk on performer props. Apply changes. And then let's move the drum major onto the podium. Boom. And now we should have the drum major on the podium. Very good. Okay, now from there, we can, oop, we're one step off, aren't we? Boop, there we go. All right, so now we've got a nice looking setup Let's go ahead and lock that, those guys in. The reason I like to lock the performers in is because once they're in place, then I can't select them. And it's nice to just have that. All right, the next bit I like to do is to um, add my props. In this case, our props are gonna be two stages on the 35s, uh, both sides, sides one and two. And then I like to uh, highlight them. They're gonna be 15 by 15 feet and four feet tall. So we do a shape prop a box, and then sw switch this to feet, or you can use the yards if you'd like. Height, four feet, 15 by 15 length and width. And there you can see we've got a, a set of stages on the field. Looks good. So then I would go ahead and I would make sure that this gets sent to the, the client and the client can approve, this is what you would like your setup to be. Um, my next question would probably be, do you have any ramps? How do the people get on the stage? That sort of thing. But in this case, you get the idea. Again, go ahead and select those. Display, lock selection. And now everything is locked and your setup looks good with the pit and the props. Control S, save. You are almost there. The next bit is to, of course, go back to your production planner 
and add your page tabs. So in this case, we unclick down here, the lock, and I'm gonna put my page tabs in. First page is an eight count, then 16, then eight, eight, 16, and then there's a hold 16. Now, I like to make my hold pages an A page. So I'm gonna double click my page and make that sub page tab. And now I've got all my page tabs added for this movement. The next thing I like to do is clean up my file a little bit by getting rid of all the counts I don't need. So I highlight all of the counts, take my yellow anchor to the last page tab, all the way to the end, go up here, utilities, count editor, shorten, lengthen, transition, and I'll just make it like 12 counts instead of 227. So now I have a nice tidied up file, control S. I have only the counts that I need. I have my prop set up, I have my pit set up, I have my page tabs entered. And a lot of times I'll go from here to my production sheet and I'll plunk in my measure numbers. I like to do that uh, just because it, I make sure that I've got the right amount of time uh, entered into the drill. So the opening set is measure zero. First page is measures one, two. I like to do one space, the dash space, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 for those four bars, and then 15, 16, 17, 18. And then I'll double check uh, my measures and my score. If there's any rehearsal letters, I'll put in rehearsal letters. In this case, there aren't any. And so now I've got a nice setup file. Now, I usually don't add notes until the very end uh, because sometimes the page numbers change or things change. So I wait till the very end to add my notes in the notes one category of my production sheet. The last thing I like to do, and a big important step, is to sync the audio. So in this case, you go to File, Document Options, Preferences, down here, Animation. Now I have my audio file ready to go. It's an AUG file on my desktop. So I'll choose uh, Practice Audio. Do you want to enter the drill? Yes. And then I go ahead and get my, um, I click on the speaker. It says, do you want to start sync? I like to do it, press space bar once per count. And I just get ready to tap. I know this is a very fast tempo to start. And then you hit the check mark. And now there are little timestamps for each page tab that you can see. Double check that it uh, runs smoothly when I play it. It's moving along perfectly with the beat. So I'm good to go. Control S. And now on this file, I am ready to add my performers and start putting drill uh, to motion for my client. If you found this tutorial helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe. Thank you.